Hey, Tactical Painter back out in the Suits Crafting Wood Shop. Welcome back out to the shop. Last week we turned up this off-center jewelry box out of Maple, did a test video, and uh, you guys saw how that turned out. It turned out pretty nice. Had a little mistake there at the end that I learned some stuff from. Sharpen your tools, folks. A sharpened tool is always helpful, always appreciated, and, uh, and things turn out a little bit better, a little bit easier those ways. So this week I did a casting video, uh, if you guys didn't see that I'll go ahead and throw the link of it over here and you guys can come check that out. We turned up this beautiful blue cube that you guys will see here in just a moment when I throw it on the lathe and uh, we're going to get this turned up into one of these off-center jewelry boxes. It's going to be a little bit bigger and it's going to be spectacular, it's going to be a gift for a, uh, a young lady that is going to be turning t into a teenager this year. And so we're going to be getting that turned up for her. So stick around and we'll show you how it turns out. Got this block loaded on here, so we're going to get this turned up. I went through and flattened all the sides down, got it all squared up, and then I glued on these two blocks on the end, just a couple of waste blocks. That way I can save as much material out of this as I can, especially this top where I've got this small block of wood that you can see there. So we're going to go ahead and get this rounded. I measured this out with a pair of calipers. And we've got a radius of one inch and three eighths, so that would be two and three quarters of an inch is the widest that we're going to be able to make this jewelry box. And so uh, let's just go ahead and get this going. down through 600 grit, turned it round, got it sanded down to 600 grit. I just want to clean it off and see what I'm looking at here. Looks like I've got a pretty good surface. I don't see any visible scratches from any of the, the earlier grits. I think I'm ready to do some polishing on this. And then we will uh, turn our tenon for our off-center turning and get this going. Okay, got that all turned around. Now what I need to do is I need to do my offset. Uh, the last one that I did, I did an offset of a quarter of an inch. And that was pretty good for that size. For this one, I'm thinking, I don't know, three-eighths maybe? I think three-eighths would be pretty good. So... I've got I've got this piece of wood here and I want to do my offset toward the piece of wood that way I save as much as the wood as possible and then the back side this side here will be the the thicker side that I'll flatten out later so I've got I've got two lines here that I'll designate for my offset looks like I've got the larger chunk toward this line so I'll do my offset on this line and then on the opposite side you'll see that I have a line right here too that should go to the same corner so they should be both going to this right here and they are and so we're going to use that line for our offset we'll do five sixteenths double check my line and line it up on that line there and then I will mark that there and now we'll do that on the opposite side make sure we're on the same line let's 
so now I'm going to take that line, that, that cross point between these two lines, the one that we just drew in our original, and I'm going to put that on my center point. And that's going to give me the offset. Bring up my tail stock. And we'll just drive that in. Okay. <laughs> Damn, look at a little bit of vibration there. I think I'm going to turn my speed down. Hold on a minute. Okay, well you guys are going to get a new perspective today. So now I've got this off center and I turned on the lathe to test it out and uh, had a little bit of vibration there, so if you guys had watched that video, you would have gotten sick. It was like an earthquake drill out in the shop. So I've got this uh, mounted off center with our 5 16 offset, and uh, a little bit of vibration there. I've got it tuned to the point to where the vibration has the least amount of shake, and then uh, we're just going to get this turned back a little bit, and I'm, just, I'm not going to go back far. I just want to go back far enough, and then I'll go and I will sand it flat. Uh, on the back side. That's pretty good. I think that's about the distance that I had uh, on the previous box that I did. So now I'm going to take it over to my belt sander. I'll get that flattened all the way out and I'll go to this line here and this line here. That gives me a border here. It's a little easier to turn it down this way um, than it is to try and grind off that whole section because now it's, I've got a, uh, an exact point on here where it's going to um, line up with my front and everything so it just keeps everything concentric and everything working out nicely so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the tenon real quick I'm gonna take my uh, parting tool and I'll cut in the tenon right in here All right, so I got the back side all flattened off and then I got it sanded and polished and it's looking really good now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to recut this tenon into the acrylic. Um, I just went to mount this up and I'm looking at it and I'm going, you know, this doesn't look right. And it's because this bottom is actually, it, it, the plywood that I'm using, it's um, cabinetry plywood. So it's got a real thin layer of cherry, a layer of MDF, then three layers, four layers of pine, and then a layer of MDF and a layer of cherry again. So I'm just not trusting it to actually be the tenon that holds it into the jaws. So I'm going to make my tenon out of the actual resin here. Alright, we'll clean that off and uh, we'll get this going. Alright, we got that flipped around into our jaws and now we're going to part off the top. Alright, now I can start uh, shaping my top here. Alright, got you back on my table now that I've got it to a smaller size and I've got this huge counterweight off the back it's not vibrating as much I can turn up the speed a little bit and work on the top here just 
So I'm just trying to make a really simple dome shape. So all I want to do, just keeping it simple on this one. Okay, so got the top all rounded over, sanded up, and polished. I think I'm going to part it just beneath the wood a little ways. And uh, I, I want to have the wood be the entire lid, I think. I don't know, that's a hard choice. Do I want to have the lid part of the wood? But you see, when I do use the parting tool, it's going to actually leave a gap, so it's not going to look like it lines up. So that's a little bit of a problem. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the wood in the lid. I'm gonna part it just below it. I cut that the rest of the way off with my saw. There we go. I'll have to clean that up on the disc sander. But we got that parted off. I'll get you a close up of the lid. Got a real nice polish on it. There's the front. Right, that'll do nicely. So we'll clean up the inside here and we'll get this drilled out. Okay, so I've got this flattened off, I got it sanded and polished, and it's looking nice. So now that we got it looking nice, let's put a big hole in it. I'm going to drill down to one and a quarter, and that'll give me plenty of room to part off the bottom and, uh, and still have room left in the bottom to actually have a bottom. I'm just going to start off with a real small hole, and then I will work up... To, I've got up to an inch and a half in Forstner bits and the rest I'll just have to do by hand. So I got my hole widened out and I even uh, polished and sanded up the inside. So now my hole has a total width one and three quarters so I widened it about a quarter of an inch and as for the depth I'm looking at one and twenty nine sixty fourths so basically one and almost one and a half inches deep now if I set my depth and put it here to the outside I've still got room for my base and I've got room to cut this off here too so Let's go ahead and get this uh, parted off and we will get this going. The last time I had a, a catastrophe when I went to part it off, the tool wasn't getting in there and when I went to pull it out it skipped across the, the rest and what I found was that my tool just wasn't sharp so I sharpened it up and I've been having a lot easier time with my parting tool. There we go, got that all parted off. So now I'm going to get that cleaned up on the uh, disc sander and we'll get that flattened off and polished up and then uh, it'll be time to do some buffing. I think I'll hit these on my buffing wheels just to make sure I have a nice pristine finish. And then put the hinges on the back and that'll be done. We're almost there. Okay, so for the last few seconds you're just going to have to bear with me because I Took, I got the box all turned up, polished up, sanded up, all of it, and took it inside in order to drill the holes that I needed for my hinge. So I just took these little um, brass plated, you know, gold hinges, and and they've got four holes on them. So two screws on the bottom, two screws on the top. I took them inside because I don't have a drill press, and I wanted to have the most stable platform possible. And after I did that. Forgot to bring it back out to the shop so I can show you guys how it turned out when it finished. So you're going to have to just 
bear with me, look at the pictures, and I'll, I'll talk to you about each photo as they go across. So, and I, and I can demonstrate here because I still have this little maple box that we did our test with. So, on the back side here, I'll show you the pictures of the back side on the blue one. So, on each side, I put one of those hinges. And the reason for that is if we remove our lid, you can see that the thickest portion on our wood is these two back sides, or these two sides here. And I did this intentionally. I wanted to be able to have enough meat left to have room for the screws to go in through to hold the hinges, and then the screws to go through the lid to hold the hinges, and then it would be able to hinge open like you see in this picture here. So, I, and when I did this actually, I made a mistake. So, I took it inside, I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at, you know, putting a single hinge, one big hinge, just right in the middle. And I thought that kind of looked cool. So, uh, my wife came by, she's like, actually, I think it looks better with the one hinge as opposed to the two. And I'm like, yeah, so do I. And I kind of forgot that I needed to have that extra meat there. So, I figured out what depth I could set my drill bit to. I measured it, you know, the, in the end of the hole there. I, I drilled it without going all the way through. I took the screws out to the shop, I shortened them down on the grinder, and I got them to where they weren't going to poke out, or so I thought, and then when I screwed them in place, it actually pushed the inside forward just slightly. So I tried to back them out, they wouldn't come out, ended up drilling the tops of the screws out, grinding them off flat, polishing them off, and so you can kind of see, if you look in the photos, that you, you can kind of see two little... Um, silver spots on the back and that those are those two screws that are in there um, the two top ones came out fine filled those in with CA glue you couldn't even tell and then I went back in drilled the two holes on each side like I should have from the beginning and then drilled the two holes on the lid and it went together just beautifully um, one thing you do need to be careful with is that there's not a whole lot of side to side so if your hinges like mine did um, go in toward the hole Watch your depth carefully. I was watching it carefully and I still ended up getting the drill bit through the hole on the inside on my on my blue off-center turn jewelry box. And not a huge deal. The, uh, the screw actually was so long that it passed through just the tip. Just the tip of it passed through into the hole. I ground it down with a Dremel tool, repolished it back up with, a, with the polishing um, uh, little little polishing drum sanders on the Dremel tool and then polished it back up with some buffing wheels and put a CA finish on the inside and it looks great so it, it wasn't an issue uh, looks fantastic as you guys can see and it turned out really nice so really happy with how this turned out and the maple box here um, and I'll show a video of this coming up in the near future you can see last that you guys saw it had a hole here on the bottom and now it's got some wood in it. So I ended up turning a plug for this maple box and then um, I put a little bit of a rim on the plug so that I could press fit that into the uh, into the hole there. Uh, next step is going to be to flatten this off, get it all nice and flat again and then I'm going to do a little bit of finish hand sanding on this whole box. I'll get hinges put on here, get a nice finish on it and then that will go up on my Etsy site. So. Absolutely nothing has been wasted here. Even my test box is going to turn out really nice. And the jewelry box, they were absolutely astonished with it. And they actually had a little tiny um, ring box that they took the lid off of and they glued it down inside. And so it actually has like a little leather um, holder for a ring that they gave her for her birthday. So that's what the jewelry box was for, was for this ring box. So they got that down inside it holds the ring in place and the, so when she lifts the lid there's the ring that she got as a gift so it turned out really really nice and she was just blown away she got on Facebook uh, the morning after she got it she found me on Facebook friended me and then just sent me the biggest thank you and that's what wood turning and woodworking is all about you know you can make sales you can make money and all that stuff and that's great but the satisfaction the happiness and the joy that it brings to the creator when the customer sees it and they're just blown away and it brings them to tears and that's the greatest feeling that's what I love about woodworking 
yes, we make a profit. Yes, we make money off of it. Yes, it provides income so I can buy diapers and wipes and things and food for the kids and stuff. But uh, the, what brings me the most happiness is the reaction from my customers. So thank you so much for joining me out in the shop this week. This is Tactical Painter out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop joining you for another week of fun and entertainment, or at least I hope it's entertaining for you. If not entertaining, at least educational. So thanks so much for joining me out in the shop this week. This is Tactical Painter in the Suits Crafting Woodshop signing out. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Throw a subscribe button here on the side for you. Check out some of my other videos, and happy turning.